Yeah, so uh, we call that. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is not what I wanted. Yeah, so we call that um, uh, butterfly lemma says that uh, if you have uh, a group G and two subgroup, capital U and capital V, such that uh, small u is a normal subgroup of capital U and small v is the normal sub is a normal subgroup of uh, capital V. Then small u times uh, capital U intersection small v is a normal subgroup of uh, small u times uh, capital U intersection capital V. Yeah? And similarly, small v times small u intersection capital V is a normal subgroup of uh, these things and uh, yeah, of small v times uh, capital U intersection capital V. And, um, and the quotients are isomorphic. So these are normal subgroups and the quotients are isomorphic. So last time we saw a proof of this using um, using third isomorphism theorem, yeah? So today uh, we'll go towards uh, 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 jordan holder theorems, uh, which says that uh, the composition factors are unique. But um, yeah, so um, there is uh, basically what we'll do is we'll show that uh, it will follow from uh, the following results, which says that if you have two normal series. So normal series means you have chain of normal subgroups. The quotients need not be uh, need not be simple groups. Yeah. So if you have two normal series for a group, then um, then uh, they have equivalent refine and then their refinements are equivalent. So I'll tell you uh, uh, what exactly it means. But let me just write it this way. So and this is due to it's attributed to Shire. Uh, to normal series have equivalent refinements. So this is in words, and then uh, I'll see in, in mathematically what mean it means. So uh, two normal series, you say they are equivalent if they're the uh, the, if the factors of that series are uh, are same, meaning up to up to permutation, the uh, the quotients, the factors of that normal series are same. Yeah. So let me just say what this statement means. I let's say you have two normal series of a group G of a finite group G. So let's say G equals uh, G1, which contains G2 as a normal subgroup and so on, contains Gn as a normal subgroup, which is which is identity. Yeah. So this is one normal series of G. And let's say you have another normal series, H1 is G, and then it contains uh, not G, but H2. and so on, and maybe of possibly different length, HM is identity. Yeah, so you have two normal series of G, then uh, uh, you can make a refinement of, uh, of both of them. So what you do is uh, you start with, uh, so for instance, you'll start with uh, G, G1, and then between G1 and G2, you'll introduce some groups using H, yeah? So uh, what you can do is, for instance, look at uh, um, uh, um, yeah. So so maybe I'll, I'll I'll write down the definition and then I'll tell you why it's a, it's a how is it a refine. So let's call G I J as uh, uh, G I plus one times uh, hj intersection gi okay so you if you look at gij it contains gi plus 1 yeah and it's and it's contained in gi yeah so it it contains uh, uh, so if you notice it contains gi plus 1 
because uh, the way it is defined and it's contained in GI. Because uh, GI plus one is contained in GI and HJ intersection GI by definition is contained in GI. And hence, uh, and since GI plus one is a normal subgroup of uh, GI, this product makes, uh, uh, this product is a group. Yeah. So GIJs are group for all I between one and N and J between one and N. Yeah. So, um, so if you fix I, then there are, um, there are M groups between GI and GI plus one. So I have defined M. So it, they all need not be different. Yeah. Some of them may be same. But uh, but there are m um, terms between um, between gi and gi plus one, and some of these. Uh, so so for instance, yeah. So maybe uh, let's say gi one. Yeah. So what is gi one? Gi one um, so gi one is. Um, um, so J is one, yeah. So H one, H one is same as G. So, uh, so uh, this intersection is just GI, yeah. So it is uh, GI plus one times GI, but GI plus one is also contained in GI. So GI one is actually GI, yeah. And what about GIM? So GIM means uh, J is M, so H. HM, yeah, so HM means um, identity. So this intersection is identity. So GIM is GI plus one. So you can see uh, the first term is GI and the last term among uh, among these G, uh, GIJs is uh, the next guy, GI plus one. Yeah, so, and uh, of course, you know that uh, we are, uh, and this is easy to see that, uh, or straightforward to see that GIJ, uh -huh. And GIJ contains GI uh, J plus one, yeah. So because uh, because H HJ plus one is contained in HJ, yeah, and HJ plus one is a normal subgroup. So so it is going to be a normal subgroup of uh, because uh, rest of the factors are same, yeah. And HJ plus one is a normal subgroup of HJ. So HJ intersection GI, HJ plus one intersection GI is going to be a normal subgroup of um, HJ intersection GI, yeah, and uh, so on. So we we get uh, the sequence which starts, yeah, and goes on. So it will start with uh, G11, which will be G1, which is uh, same as G and so on, and it will go like this, and uh, it will end with, um, so, G, uh, N, J, and are you guys with me? Yes. Okay, good. G, N, um, G, N, let's say, okay, let me just write uh, G, N, 1, and so on, G, N, M minus one, and then G, N, M, which will be identity, yeah? Because G, N, M is, uh, oh, sorry, not, uh, uh, so, yeah, so the, uh, maybe I will go from one to n minus one because g i plus one has to make sense, and j will also go from this to m minus. Now j can go to till m, yeah, because h j it makes sense, yeah. So i goes from one to n minus one. So g one, yeah. So this, so this doesn't make sense. So maybe let's say. G n minus one, m minus one, G n minus one, one. So this is how the sequence will go. G n minus one, m. So as we see, G n minus one, m is just uh, G and G n, yeah? Because G i m is same as G i plus one. 
So the, this gives you a new normal series, yeah? And uh, you can do it in, in other, so you, we did it in one way. You can do it in another way. You can define HIJ. So now between, so what you, so what we did was in between GI and GI plus one, we introduced M groups. So instead now we can introduce M group between HJ and HJ, N groups between HJ and HJ plus one using similar techniques. Yeah, so HIJ. HIJ, you can define it as, uh, or rather, let's call it HJI. Yeah, HJI, you can define it as uh, uh, same way, HJ plus one, um, GI intersection. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, I guess this is okay. GI intersection. H H J, yeah. So, and uh, again um, here J will this time J will run from one to M minus one, and uh, I will run from one to N, yeah. So they have different length. Uh, uh, so. what is the length? They seem to have different length, yeah. But they should have same length. Yeah, so the point is um, um, the ends are same, yeah. That is why, you know, so GIM and uh, GI plus one, one, they are same, yeah. So so if you, uh, if you glue them together, then they have the same length. Then they have length n minus one times m minus one. Yeah, both of them have length n minus one. So if you if you sort of uh, identify GIM with GI plus one, one, then, uh, and uh, similarly, HJN uh, with HJ uh, plus one, one, then um, uh, they will have the same length, which will be m minus one times n minus one, okay? So uh, in and here as well again H um, J one is going to be so if you put uh, G G one G one is whole of J so H J one is just H J and uh, H J N is going to be um uh, G N is identity so H J plus one. So like in, in the previous case. So you get, and again, you can write this uh, sequence, yeah? At uh, J i um, contains at J i plus one as a, uh, as a normal subgroup. So again, uh, you get a normal series and, uh, and uh, so the, the uh, the theorem is that uh, so uh, the they are equivalent means uh, basically G I J mod uh, G I J plus one. Uh, so this uh, this these quotients are isomorphic to H J I mod H J I plus one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Okay. So this is, um, this is the statement. So, the, uh, so the, um, so you have equivalent refinement means the subsequent quotients are, uh, so they are uh, uh, m minus one times n minus one quotients, and they are all uh, they are all isomorphic. Is that okay? Yeah. So uh, so we will we'll see a proof of this. Uh, so this basically follows immediately from butterfly lemma. 
Yeah, so we will see why this is true. Okay, so uh, let's write uh, the first few terms of the sequence, yeah, just to get a, uh, get a feel of uh, uh, um, feel of what uh, what's happening, yeah. So proof. So you have G one. Uh, yeah. So you have G one is uh, contains. So G one one is G one. Yeah. So G. Uh, so maybe I'll write G one equals G one one, and then the next term is G two times G one intersection H one, and then contains G two. G1 intersection H2 and so on. This is how the first sequence look, looks like, right? And so on. And uh, and then uh, in the first uh, row, it will sort of uh, end with uh, G2. Um, G1 intersection HM, which of course is uh, same as G2 because HM is identity. Yeah. So this is G2, and then uh, you start with uh, next term G3 uh, uh, and G2 intersection H1 and so on. Yeah. So this is how, so this is what I was saying. Merge the last and the first in. The last in the first row and uh, uh, the first in the second second row, yeah, and so on. So you can start with here G two and so on and uh, keep on going. So uh, so this is how the sequence looks like. So let's now see the proof. Uh, huh. So now. Um, Yeah, so half the space is taken by some. One second, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, I uh, consider this uh, this group GI. Uh, so we want to show that gij mod gij plus one is same as uh, is isomorphic to hji hji mod hji plus one. Yeah. So let's uh, let's uh, uh, look at what uh, so gij remember is uh, um, uh, okay. So maybe uh, gij contains uh, gij plus one as a normal subgroup. Yeah, but what is gij? Gij remember is gi plus one times uh, gi intersection hj. Gi intersection hj. That was the definition. Yeah, gij is gi plus one gi intersection hj intersection gi, which is same as gi intersection hj. And uh, what is this? So uh, this is. Uh, GI uh, plus one times GI intersection HJ plus one. Yeah, this is what uh, this uh, uh, these two groups. The so we want to prove this uh, star. Yeah, so I have written down what uh, these uh, the two groups are. Yeah, so so uh, as you can see, this this does look like. Uh, yeah, so I, unfortunately, I've written the bigger group on the left-hand side, um, but that's okay, yeah. So uh, so uh, I've written the bigger group on the left-hand side, but, uh, and in the statement, I think I have written the, yeah, but it's okay. In the statement of uh, butterfly lemma, the bigger group is on the, uh, on the right-hand side. And similarly, we can write down HJI, HJI contains uh, HJI plus one as a normal subgroup. And if you write down it, the definition, this is HJ plus one times uh, 
H J intersection G I. And uh, or maybe I can write it as G I intersection H J. So that uh, is sort of parallel to, and uh, this contains as a normal subgroup uh, uh, HJ plus one uh, GI intersection. Yeah, yeah say that again. GI plus one. GI plus one intersection, yeah. GI plus one intersection. Yeah. So now we apply uh, apply uh, butterfly lemma. So uh, uh, so I guess GI is going to be U uh, capital U. So with uh, GI equals maybe capital U. And uh, di plus one equals uh, small u. And uh, so remember, small u is a normal subgroup of uh, capital U. Hi is, uh, or rather Hj, not Hi. Hj is capital V, and uh, Hj plus one is small v, yeah? So if you uh, use that, then uh, what does butterfly lemma says? Uh, GI plus one time, uh, times uh, uh, GI intersection uh, HJ uh, is a normal subgroup of uh, GI. Uh, so I guess you get this, yeah. So by butterfly lemma, um, we have that uh, this is uh, GI plus one times uh, a GI intersection HJ plus one is. Uh, is a normal subgroup of GI plus one times GI intersection HJ, yeah? So capital U intersection capital V times small u contains ca uh, small u uh, times uh, 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 capital U intersection small v, yeah? Yeah, capital U intersection small, right? So, so these are normal subgroups that we already knew, but uh, I mean, that's more, uh, more straightforward, but by um, by uh, apply butterfly lemma with this to get G i j mod G i j plus one is isomorphic to H j i plus one mod H j i. Yeah, is that okay? Yes. Sir. Yeah, so so it is just an application, straightforward application of butterfly lemma. So we get that uh, uh, you know the, all the you know, uh, they they have equivalent refinements and uh, meaning uh, if you if you have two normal series and you refine it this way to get a normal series of length n minus one times m minus one, then the quotients are the subsequent quotients after reordering are isomorphic. You just have to a uh, gij mod gij plus one uh, gi uh, uh, gij mod gi plus one j is isomorphic to hji mod uh, hji plus one. And this is how it goes. So from here now we can uh, prove the Jordan Holder theorem, which says that uh, any two composition factors have same length and uh, and they are isomorphic. So prove them and the subsequent portions are awesome. so uh, composition series of a finite group uh, let's say any Two composition series of a finite group G has same length, same length, and the composition factors, composition factors are 
or isomorphic after your dream. Yeah, so you may have to reorder the composition factors, but after reordering, they are isomorphic. Okay, so proof. So you start with two composition series of G. Yeah, so G1, Gm, like we did uh, there, and G equals H1 to Hm, possibly two different, yeah. This is Gn and this is Hm as identity. B composition, B two composition series. Yeah. So now if you look at the refinements, so, um, so we know that Gij mod uh, Gi J plus one is isomorphic to Ah, no, before that. So if you look at uh, um, this composition, so between G1 and G2, we are putting in M different groups. Yeah. So let's say G1 mod uh, G. Uh, so, uh, but what do we know about the quotient G1 mod G2? So, what do we know about G1 mod G2? What does composition series mean? G1 mod G2 is? Yeah, tell me, tell me, take a guess, don't worry. Too much, yeah. What does it mean? Say that again. Simple. simple. G1 mod G2 is a simple group, right? That is what uh, that is what it means, yeah. So, so G1 mod G2 is simple group. So what does it is simple, yeah? So what does that tell, uh, tell us that uh, if I look at, uh, so, uh, so now between G1, we have G1 equals G11 contains uh, G12 and so on, yeah? G1M equal, uh, which is G2, yeah, so this is how you, you get, yeah? So since G1, so we know that G2 mod G1 is uh, already simple, yeah? So uh, so if I look at uh, uh, this uh, G1 J mod uh, G1 J plus one, what can we say? I mean, uh, uh, most of this must be identity, right? So this, uh, this is simple, hence this is identity for all but one. Yeah, because all the other, co I mean, uh, uh, the point is this is simple. So most either, uh, I mean, it may happen that uh, G12, so G12 is either identity or G1 itself. Similarly, G G13 is either ident uh, I mean if G12 is uh, G1 then G13 is uh, either again G1 or identity and so on so there is a so there is a point till which uh, it is uh, all the groups are G1 and uh, after that every group is G2 yeah so this is identity for all but one and uh, G1j mod G1 j plus 1 is isomorphic to G1 mod G2 for exactly one J. Yeah, is that okay? Say that again. Could you repeat this part? 
yeah yeah so what i'm trying to say is see g g1 mod g2 is simple yeah so uh, if you consider uh, g12 yeah so g12 uh, so uh, g1 mod uh, g g12 mod g2 is a is a subgroup of uh, um yeah so g1 mod g2 contains uh, g12 mod g2 as a normal subgroup yeah because g12 is normal in this so if if i go mod this so so this is either the whole group g1 mod g2 so 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 this implies uh, g12 uh, so and this is simple yeah so this tells you that g12 is either g1 or g1 uh, g12 is identity uh, i is equal to g2 g g12 mod g2 is identity which means that g12 must be g2 yeah these are the only possibilities for g1 uh, g12 is this okay yeah, so, yeah. So, there are no, no proper normal subgroups yeah so this group is either uh, the whole group or identity if it is identity then g12 has to uh, has to be equal to g2 and if it is uh, whole group then g12 has to be whole of g1 right these are the only possible so similarly similarly uh, gij uh, is equal to g1 or g2 yeah for all uh, uh, for all j g1j sorry g1j is uh, either g1 or g2 for all j but at i mean um, uh, at least somewhere it will have to change right because g1m is g2 so wherever it changes let's say at the j spot from 1 it becomes 2 yeah at that spot, you will get uh, um, G1J mod G1J plus 1 is uh, G1 mod G2. And uh, and the rest of the quotients are going to be identity. Now, is it OK? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So, uh, so what I'm tra trying to say is that in this series, uh, this will be G. Uh, you can check whether G12 is G1 or not. If it is G1 then go to g3 if g3 is g, uh, g13 is g1 then uh, go on as soon as you get g2 then the rest will have, have to be g2 yeah so there is exactly one j for which uh, this is uh, isomorphic to g1 mod g2 and for the rest is identity yeah and similarly for h similarly um hji mod hj I plus one is isomorphic to Hj mod Hj plus one for all for exactly exactly one I between one and n. Yeah. So for exactly one I between one and n minus one, I guess uh, H, uh, something is wrong. No, this is okay. Yeah. So H J. Uh, uh, so I. I mean. Uh, yeah. So um, for exactly one I, uh, this is going to be isomorphic to H J mod H J plus uh, one and uh, for the rest, um, it has to be identity. Is that okay? Yes. So here also, I guess uh, I should have written exactly one. Yeah, one J between uh, one and M. It doesn't have uh, one and M minus one. So in each, uh, in each uh, uh, row, you'll get only one guy, yeah? But uh, but we saw that these two not by the previous result these two normal series are equivalent. Okay. The previous result result the two normal series are equivalent. Okay. 
So what does that mean? So the first from the first normal series, we know that there are exactly n non-trivial uh, quotients. Yeah. Um, uh, n minus sorry n minus 1 non trivial quotients because uh, g1 to gn yeah so n minus 1 non trivial quotients so uh, and from the second series we know there are m minus 1 non trivial quotients so gij have the sequence involving gij have n minus 1 non trivial quotients quotients And uh, the sequence involving HJI have uh, M minus one non-trivial quotients. Hence, the two number must be same, yeah? N minus one equals M minus one, which implies N equals M. And of course, the quotients are also same, yeah? Because, and, and the quotients, quotients are isomorphic. Uh, isomorphic up to odd, up to up to z or three. Yeah. So up to reordering, the quotients are also isomorphic. Is that okay now? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So so the I mean you sort of think of it and uh, it's a it's an array. Uh, it's a like a uh, n by m uh, rows of uh, groups of normal subgroups, yeah, and you are comparing them. So in each row, you'll get one non-trivial guy, and uh, uh, and uh, similarly in the HS, uh, each row you'll get one non-trivial guy, and uh, the first uh, non uh, and the um, yeah, so and. Uh, in, uh, the non-trivial guys are sort of isomorphic in some some odd ring, yeah. So uh, GIJ is isomorphic to HJI and so on. Uh, GIJ mod, uh, sorry, not GIJ. Uh, GIJ mod GI J plus one is isomorphic to HJI mod HJI plus one. Yeah? So so the qu quotients are also isomorphic up to the odd. Okay, so this proves the Jordan Holder theorem. So that says that two composition series have the same length and uh, and so on. Yeah. Yes, any any questions or comments? So uh, so these uh, I mean uh, there is uh, more things in this direction. For instance, uh, you know what solvable groups are? Did I tell you what solvable groups are? So, uh, so solvable groups are uh, groups whose composition series, uh, whose composition factors are all uh, uh, abelian groups. Yeah. So that means. Uh, so basically, what you, uh, this th theorem tells you is that uh, uh, so there exists a compo. Uh, so we showed, uh, I guess, there exists a composition series, and uh, uh, so what it says is that uh, any group can be built out of simple groups in some sense. Yeah. So it's extension of various simple groups. So, uh, but there are more complicated simple groups like uh, alternating uh, groups and some other non-abelian simple groups. So, but there are some easy, easy to understand simple groups like Z mod PZ. Yeah. So uh, a group is said to be solvable if if um, if all the composition factors are Abelian simple groups. So abelian, sim uh, abelian simple groups means it has to be cyclic, Z mod P set and so on. So there are, uh, uh, I mean, um, there, uh, the, this uh, nomenclature is due to Galva, so due to Galva theory. So it, it, it came up in uh, when you sort of, when people were trying to understand whether certain uh, equations are solvable by radicals or not. And, uh, uh, it so turns out that uh, there is a group you can associate with that polynomial called the Galva group. And uh, if that group is solvable, so it's made up of, uh, let's say, up the cyclic extent, uh, cyclic groups, then uh, then you can solve the polynomial equation by radicals as well. Okay. So if you see Galva theory, you'll, you'll see that in more de in detail. 
Okay, so so this is all I wanted to say about uh, about this composition series, and uh, and uh, so last time I said something about uh, uh, this, um, yeah. Is Q symmetric matrices, yeah. So, so there is not much more apart from what I stated, yeah. So, yeah. So, such that the matrix. Huh? So, so I guess uh, this is uh, this is more or less uh, where uh, where this uh, 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 it where it ends in Artin as well. That uh, if you have a non-degenerate skew symmetric bilinear form, then there exists a basis consisting of two n vectors. Yeah. So as soon as you have a bilinear uh, non-degenerate skew symmetric bilinear form on a vector space, then it's uh, automatically even, even dimensional such that the matrix of this with respect to B is uh, this thing. Yeah. So the proof is not, uh, as I said, the proof is similar. Yeah. So I'll just uh, uh, tell you briefly what the proof is, and then we will call it a day. Yeah. So what you do is, uh, so you and maybe you can look at the book for more details. Yeah. Uh, so so it's the uh, more or less the same proof. So what you do? So remember, if I take a one-dimensional uh, vector space with a skew symmetric form, then it must be zero, right? Because v comma v, the inner product has to be zero. So. Uh, on a one-dimensional vector space, you can't have a non-degenerate skew symmetric bilinear form. Yeah, so here itself, you can see that you need at least two dimension to get to a non-degenerate bilinear form. So what you can, what so we proved this for for symmetric, but uh, maybe symmetric is not very necessary. So let uh, v be a v comma this be a. Um, Vector space with uh, skew symmetric bilinear form. The space with skew symmetric bilinear form. Linear form. And uh, say W is a subspace of V. Subspace such that uh, this and this. Um, Bilinear form when we restrict to W is non-degenerate. Yeah. Then uh, we showed that uh, V is W W pulp. Yeah, where remember W pulp means V in V such that uh, V comma W in a product is zero for all W in W. Okay, so those vectors which are uh, uh, of uh, those elements of V which are orthogonal to every vector of uh, W. Yeah. So this you can prove even for skew symmetric. Yeah. So the point is uh, so uh, with the same proof. Yeah. So the same proof goes through. So maybe the same proof goes through. Basically, if you have something in the intersection, so some vector is in W and W pulp, that means uh, that vector is orthogonal to every vector in W, um, w pulp, yeah? But the, uh, you see the pairing, uh, uh, is, is, sorry, that vector is orthogonal to every vector in uh, that vector is orthogonal to every vector in W, but the pairing is uh, non-degenerate on W. That means uh, that vector must be the zero vector. Yeah. So if you start with a vector in W which is orthogonal to every vector in W, so that in um, then it must be the zero vector by non-degeneracy of this pairing. Uh, so that tells you that the intersection is zero, and then again you can. Uh, show that every vector, so you start with any vector in V, uh, then you can write it as uh, something in uh, W and something in W part. So, um, yeah, so uh, basically you have to project it to one of them. Uh, yeah, so you'll have to use the uh, pairing. Yeah, so, so, uh, 
So maybe, okay, so uh, W intersection, W pipe is, uh, is zero is uh, same proof. Uh, so, and uh, then V is in V, then uh, what do you do? You, you want to write it as, uh, yeah, maybe one can also do the dimension count, yeah? So, uh, uh, a dimension of W and plus dimension of W power has to be. So, maybe instead of uh, doing it element wise, you just check that uh, dimension of W plus dimension of uh, W power is uh, same as dimension B. So, the subspace generated by these two has to be the whole of. Uh, Hold of V because the intersection is zero. Okay. Or you can maybe do it uh, directly as well. Okay, so th uh, this is what, and uh, then uh, your, uh, the proof of uh, this goes via, so now the proof of, so for the proof of the theorem, let's call this a theorem. So proof of theorem. What you do is take V in, uh, so uh, you start with some uh, 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 V1 in uh, in V, then uh, uh, non-zero. Now, of course, uh, uh, the pairing is non-degenerate non on V. Yeah, we start with a non-degenerate pairing, so that's so there exists. Uh, V2, such that, uh, uh, let's say, um, yeah, uh, such that uh, V1, V2 is uh, non-zero, yeah? V2 in V. And of course, uh, remember V1, V1 is um, not, V1, V1 is zero, implies this V1, and uh, V2, these are linearly independent. Yeah, so V2 cannot be a scalar multiple of V1, otherwise uh, it would have been, it couldn't have been zero, yeah? So, uh, so uh, and of course you can scale V2, so scaling V2 may assume V1, V2 is, uh, this pairing is one. So then V2, V1 will become minus one automatically, yeah? So now uh, let uh, W be the subspace uh, generated by V1, V2. Okay. Mm. And then uh, by the, the result, we, uh, so, so uh, the pairing is non-degenerate on V, and of course, then it is non-degenerate on W as well. Or you can directly say it's, uh, it's non-degenerate on W because V1, V2, uh, the pairing is non-zero, yeah? So then V, you can write it as uh, W plus W pulp. And uh, dimension of W pulp is um, dimension of uh, V minus two. So by induction, And there exist, uh, um, you know, basis uh, W1, W2, uh, so which appears in pairs, yeah? So maybe uh, let's just write it this way. V2, uh, sorry, V3, V4, uh, and so on. Vn minus one, Vn, such that, um, you know, the matrix, uh, uh, this uh, V3, uh, V, VI, VI plus one. Uh, uh, sorry. So these pairs, um, uh, sorry, VI plus one, VI, VI plus one. Yeah, but not all I, so V3, V4, V5, V6, and so on, yeah? So this is how you should think of it, yeah? So, 
uh, or maybe I'll write it differently, such that the uh, such that the matrix of uh, of uh, this with respect to um, let's say uh, the ordered basis. V3, V5, V7, Vn minus 1, V4, V6, Vn. So it's an even number. Uh, N is an even number. And, um, and N, N is even. And... So uh, the induction hypothesis says that uh, the dimension of the vector space w per, uh, w per must be even, and uh, we have this such that uh, um, uh, the matrix of this with respect to the spaces is uh, i zero minus i zero. Yeah. So now, if you take uh, uh, the basis B to be v one, v three, uh, so Let's call this B prime, yeah? So now you can take B to be V1, V3, Vn minus one, the odd ones, and V2, V4, the even ones here, Vn. Then, uh, the, then the matrix of uh, this with respect to B is, is zero. So this was i n minus one, uh, or rather not n minus one, the half of it. Yeah. So let me not index it. Yeah. So, so half of uh, n, n minus n over two or something. Uh, yeah. Maybe I can write it n over two. Uh, n minus n minus two over two. So one, n minus two over two, minus two over two. So now you will get n minus i n. Okay, so uh, so basically v three and v four has pairing. Uh, uh, when you pair v three v four, you get one or minus one. So one if you do v three v four, if you do v four v three, you get minus one. So that's why if you arrange it this way, then the pairing of v three with v four is one. Uh, uh, will give you a one in this in this uh, piece and uh, minus one in this piece. Okay, so this is how you can prove uh, this thing. Is this okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So maybe this is uh, this is more or less the end of the course. So next week I'm not here, but uh, next week, at least till Wednesday, I'm not here.